Do you have a favorite place that you love to travel to? That place you never get tired of visiting, especially on credit card points and miles. Well, for my mom, that is Italy. She could and probably does go there almost every year. Listen to hear about her most recent Italian adventure. Welcome to Points Talk with the Travel Mom Squad. We are three moms who've discovered how to leverage credit card welcome offers to get hundreds of thousands of dollars of travel expenses for nearly free. We've used credit card points and miles to take vacations to places like Hawaii, Paris, Greece, Maldives, Japan, and so much more. And the best part, we each still have 800 plus credit scores. Imagine being able to take the vacation of your dreams for nearly free. It's totally possible and we're here to show you how. Hey, I'm Alex. And I'm Pam, Alex's mom. And I'm Jess. Let's talk points. Today, Pam is sharing with us her annual sister's trip to one of her favorite places, Italy, starting in Chicago, on to Rome, then Lake Como, and finally Cinque Terre. These two senior citizens had an amazing time together. So Pam, let's go. I cannot wait to hear about this one. I know how much you love Italy. I think you've been counting down to this trip for a very long time because you were you brought it up very often and I don't blame you because Italy is amazing. So first, why don't you tell us how you and your sister got to Italy? Okay, so first of all, we were really lucky that we were able to get tickets and business class on Turkish before they did a devaluation. I mean, the price before this is amazing. So we were able to fly 90K round trip in business class. Business class the whole way. Uh, we went from, we did a positioning flight into Chicago, stopped in Istanbul, and then to Rome. Coming back, we did from Milan to Istanbul and then to um, JFK. And we were actually on the older configuration, the older airplane. I know, Jess, you recently had the great new configuration. And when I saw those pictures, I was like, oh, dang, I want to be on that new flight that Jess was on where I had my own pod. But, you know, we got into that airplane. Alex, it's like the one that we did the first time we went to Greece. And I was yeah. like, I hate this. If no, I'm, I'm actually, it's not, obviously it doesn't look as nice as the one yeah. that Jess went on, but it's so comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's so wide. And this is my caveat. I'm fine with that old one if I'm traveling with someone I know. If I'm not, I don't want to be on that because I'm either having to crawl over some, because it's a two, three, two um configuration i don't want someone crawling over me when they have to go to the bathroom and i don't want to crawl over them so it, but if i'm going with someone like with my sister i was like i got in and i go oh i'm not hating this this is nice what i love about it is it's the seats are wide the foot wheels are really wide they're not narrow like they are in a lot of business class seats so it's a huge storage storage area underneath your foot that you can put a lot of your stuff. Really, really nice. And I hadn't been on a Turkish flight for a long time. And I totally forgot how much I love Turkish. I mean, I love their catering. Their catering is good. You can't beat tea lights when you're sitting down to eat. They have they have their little trolleys with their appetizers and their desserts. Great service, you know, the huge seats. They make your bed for you. I mean, what's not to love about this? Jess, on the new one that you went on, do they have the narrower footwells, like the angled seats? I'm trying to, I don't think, I don't think it was narrow. Okay. Um, I slept well on the plane in the A350, but I actually slept really well when I flew on the older business class. Because you don't feel as like claustrophobic, so yeah, I don't, I don't remember it being like super narrow or angled. Yeah, so I, it sounds to me like I mean, you just can't go wrong with Turkish. No, I mean, I, I, feel like I know you, I know you had really good food on your flight. We had really good food on our flight. I think their service is great. There's just so many good things about. It. And usually, you stop in Istanbul and get to go to the 
Istanbul Lounge, which is a huge, really nice lounge. Lots of food options. Now, I must say the first time I went there, I was probably more impressed than this time, but it's several years later. And it just, it was pretty crowded. It seemed a little older. I didn't, you know, there was, as we talked in the past, I'm not that adventurous of an eater. So there were, weren't a lot of food options that I was sold on. And then I couldn't believe this. No Diet Coke. I even had to go ask someone. They don't have Diet Coke at their lounge or any Coke products. I'm like, or Pepsi. I'm just like, are you kidding me? So that well, was kind they of just kind of water and alcoholic drinks. No, they have these strange, um, different, you know, these brands that I didn't know, and they weren't cold. Oh, okay. So they were like more fruit juices that were carbonated, and yeah, so I had water. So that was a little bit of a disappointment. Prior to all of this happening, though, we were flying out of Chicago, and I have wanted to stay at the park. I love Park Hyatt. The Park Hyatt Chicago is there. And I thought, okay, if we're going to Chicago, let's go stay at the Park Hyatt Chicago and let's uh, spend a day there. And I loved it. Absolutely loved this Park Hyatt. It's in a great location. It has great decor. Everything about it is really nice. I have a new jet lag tip for people, especially, I know Jess is immune to jet lag. I get worse as I get older. And so my new jet lag tip is to, rather than go to do a positioning flight and get to the airport six hours later and be exhausted from that, I now go to the city that I'm going to position in and spend the night there. And then when I come back into the United States, I like to stay a night there. And it kind of helps me adjust to all of that. And so that was real. It has been really good. The Park Hyatt Chicago is a Category 6. We paid 29 k to stay there. Super spacious, um, a great breakfast where you get one hot beverage, one cold beverage, and one um, entree. It's on the Magnificent Mile. It's walkable to a lot of places. We did a Viator tour of the harbor and visited the Navy Pier. My sister and I saw this huge Ferris wheel there, and we looked at it and said, we would never go on there. And then we, I looked at her, I said, I think we need to go on there because we said we would never go on there. Yeah. So we conquered our fears. And seriously, my sister was petrified the whole time. If I moved at all, she jumped. And I was like, oh, I think I'm getting over my fear of heights a little bit because I was perfectly calm the whole time on it. So, but she, she was a little nervous. So we had a good time exploring Chicago for a day. Um, because we were globalists, I got late checkout. We were not flying out until about eight o'clock that night. So we got a uh, late checkout and went back to Chicago O'Hare to go into a lounge. And I was thought, oh, this is great. So what type of lounge does Turkish have? I mean, Turkish is such a great airline. They must have a great lounge. Their lounge is a Swiss port lounge. We were flying out of Terminal 5, didn't want to have to try to go do the Polaris or, you know, I think that's in Terminal 1. I have done Polaris when I've flown Turkish out of Chicago and it's, I mean, I just think Chicago is not very fun to navigate because it is a people bus. You have to go back through security. And so it, unless you have like positioning same day and you're going to be there for seven hours, <laughs> It doesn't make a ton of sense in your situation to try to do that. It's a lot of work. No. Well, let me just tell you, the Swiss Port Lounge was one of the worst lounges I've ever been to. And Turkish definitely needs to contract with a better lounge because it was busy. It was dirty. It had horrible food options. We walked in. We grabbed some chess, uh, Chex Mix. I think some uh, potato chips. And we went back out into the busy, busy terminal. So if I'm willing to do that, I'm not willing to even stay in that airport lounge. It was bad. So that I would, I would be saying that you're going to go to have a great airport lounge experience if that's where you're positioning from and you're in Terminal 5. Unless so, you're going to do, yeah, like go to the Polaris lounge and you have a ton of time. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, I'd almost, with it being that bad, I'd almost get to the airport earlier so I could go to Polaris lounge. So. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Um, we did um, fly into Rome. 
My sister was obsessed if we were going to Italy that we needed to go to Rome for a day. Our flight arrived really, really late. Um, it was about, uh, I think we were like, a, well, we were 10 hours to Istanbul, four hours in Istanbul airport, another couple hours to get to Rome. It was like midnight when we got there and I wasn't going to go all the way into Rome, you know, for a nice hotel. So we just stayed at a Hilton Garden Inn. It was about $200. It came with an okay breakfast and it was just your typical airport hotel. Nothing great, nothing you know, horrible, but, you know, we just went right to bed. Um, When I decided that I was going to um, go to Rome, I wanted to stay in a Hyatt hotel. Not a lot of choices in Rome for Hyatt hotels. There's a Tribune, um, I think it's a Hyatt by JVD is what they call it, um, that you could stay at. And that's where we decided to stay. I was actually really looking forward to it because I had heard some interesting things about it. But it was it was okay. It was you know nice. I thought the rooms were 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 nice. The rooms themselves looked like they'd been renovated. I think the thing that I didn't like is like the bathroom didn't have a door that separated the bedroom and the shower area. You know, if you're going with someone else, um, I mean, my sister and I aren't. You know. And we're sisters, but still, I don't want to see someone shower. She didn't want to see me shower. <laughs> so it was a even though you have to kind of position yourself so you don't see that person. But are we gonna have to put of... a are we gonna have to put a mature rating on this episode? <laughs> <laughs> well, they can just edit that out if that's too risky. <laughs> <laughs> so it did it was an okay It was a nice room, nice bathroom, um, just not very private, a nice breakfast it can fit three people because they do have family um suites for 32k a night we spent 20k for our night there it is a category five didn't have a lot of time in rome um we did do a rick steve's audio tour and i think those are great for just getting around and seeing the sights um, we it was a pretty quick day for us. We did get started on the most important thing of a trip to Italy, though, and that was our daily gelato. And in fact, in fact, I wouldn't even call it daily gelato. Hourly, it was twice a day for sure. And one night or two nights, Pam had three. My sister would only go for two, but I love gelato, and that's one of the reasons I love Italy so much. Do you have a go-to flavor? Yes, my go-to is amarena, which is black cherry. And that's my sister's too. I will sometimes get some mint, uh, mint chocolate or salted caramel, but I never not have the amarena too. Pam, do you know what hotel is coming to Rome? Yes, I do. And that's where I would stay. The, the Thompson is coming. When is it? Is it in early 20? I don't know. I was just yeah, looking at their sorry. website and it still just says coming soon. So I will be honest, and I feel like this is going to upset people. Rome is not somewhere I have ever really wanted to go. Like, it's just never been, like, I love Italy, but I've always just been like, eh, Rome. Like, it just seems really crowded. The history there. I mean, oh, but it just seems so crowded. And, like, every time I see videos of the Trevi Fountain, I get Oh, it's crazy. And I'm like, this just seems like it's too many people, you know? But... Then I heard there was a Thompson Rome coming, and I was like, okay, I'll try it. I love it. Yeah, it, it is very crowded. And I was surprised because we were there at the end of September. Usually when I travel in Europe um, for the shoulder season, September, October, I expect to see fewer crowds, and I was surprised. It was, it was very crowded everywhere. And Trevi Fountain, oh, my goodness. It is it's insanity. So, but we, you know, we got to see a little bit of Rome. My sister was happy to say she's gone there. And so we only were there for one full day. Um, The next morning we got up and we took the train to Milan. It takes about three hours to get to Milan. We, on all my train rides, I went first class. It was about $200 for um, first class seats. And I just, you know, I want my wife. I I want, 
my, I don't want to be crowded. I want enough space for my luggage. I just want all the things and I want a bigger seat. And so that I feel me, like if I, whenever one years old, I think you get Pam, get, Pam gets what Pam wants. Exactly. I feel like I paid my dues with tons of economy, tons of, you know, not so nice hotels that now it's time to, to treat myself and I'm going to make it easier. So we um, went to Milan and we arrived in Milan and we had arranged a limousine service to take us into Lake Como, which was our next spot. And we arrive and I'm looking, we're looking all over, we're looking for our sign with our name on it because I've arranged this limousine service and no one has our name on it. And I'm freaking Wait, out. Really? Actually, was it an actual limousine that was driving you to Lake Como? Well, they call it a limousine service, I but yeah. I guess it's yeah, I mean, no. you know, like people imagining, you know you didn't take a limousine, but I'm imagining you taking in a limo. First, she's going first class on all her trains, and she takes limos. It's usually a Mercedes van or a nicer yeah. vehicle. But there was no one there. So I so I had double checked my um, email, make sure that I've got it all right. Yes, it's all right. The guy had sent me the confirmation. So I give him a call and he goes, well, I'm sh did you sure you had reserved this? It was kind of questioning me. And then I'm questioning myself and my heart's starting to pound because you all know Pam has made a mistake or two in the past. And then all of a sudden he says, well, hold on for a while. And he gets off and he gets back. He says, well, it seems like your driver had an accident. I, and I say accident in quotes because if the driver really had an accident, wouldn't he have let me know? And what did we have lent with that instead yes. of, did you book the right day? Da, 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 da. Right. So anyway, so I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I said, I'm here ready to go to Lake Como says, well, do you know what my options are? He says, well, we don't have anybody that can take you today. He says, I would get an Uber or, or a taxi. And I'm like, okay, what's this going to cost? I, this was supposed to be about $300 to get from a lawn to Lake Como. I hurried up, got on Uber, found someone that would take us, and it was going to be 200 So it was actually cheaper, and it worked out just fine. But it was a little dicey there for a moment. I was a little bit nervous. Well, whoever you booked with, I don't, we don't recommend booking with them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I actually rode back with them, which was, which was kind of stupid of me. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> he, he promised me, I sent him several texts beforehand and emails. Are you sure you're going to be there? And he says, I, we will be there. And I again apologize for the accident our driver had. So I guess I, I'm very trusting. You really are, especially when it was more expensive than the Uber. Well, just didn't want to know for sure about getting the Uber back. Yeah, it can be hard in places like that. Like, you know, Milan has a lot of Ubers. But like, does Lake Cole have a lot of Ubers? Yes, right. That's it. And the hotel, it was going to, from them, it was going to cost the same price. I had this all arranged. And I just thought, oh, I'm just going to stick with it. So our hotel and the reason for going to Lake, back to Lake Como was before Hyatt and the small luxury hotel ran parted ways, I was able to book one of my and Jess's all-time favorite hotels for a second time, the Grand Victoria Concept Hotel and Spa for 45K a night. Now, my sister and I went there a few years ago. She loved it. She was obsessed with it. I was obsessed with it. So when I saw that I could do it, I decided to, I think I said, I, I think I mentioned to all of you that I'd found it or you had found it or something, Jess. And then Alex, probably five minutes later said, oh, I, I want to go with you, mom. And I had already, I says, oh, sorry. I'd already texted my sister because I knew she loved it so much. I so think you Alex, I think I think it was that I found availability on Max My Point and I like mm -hmm. sent it to you in our group chat. And I think five minutes later, you were like, okay, I booked it. And Alex was like, I want to go. And you're like, oh, sorry, I invited my sister. I'll never live that one down. Sure. So I got to be not so quick on the draw anymore because she wasn't happy with me. 
I mean, I, I forgive you. And, you know, I ended up booking some trips, so I wouldn't have been able to go, but I still need to make it there sometime. Yeah, it it is. It is one of my all time. In fact, it may be my all time favorite hotel. We did get an upgraded room. There were welcome treats there, some beverages. The funny thing is I sent a picture of our room to Jess and Alex. And Jess goes, that looks exactly like the room I stayed in. She said, I stayed in room 152. I go, well, that's the room that we're staying in. So well, I had to like go back in my, because obviously I don't remember the room. I stay at so many hotels. I can't remember all the room yeah. numbers. But I I remember that I had emailed the spa and was like, I want to book a massage. I'm in this room. So I like went back in my email to find what room I was in. And I said, I was oh, in 152. Okay. And Pam was like, so am I. And then I'm like, what side of the bed are you sleeping on? No. <laughs> so we were just, Alex was probably like, who am I in this group chat with? These weirdos. <laughs> But it is small world that that would happen wow. because it's, it's got quite a few rooms. It's, you know, but it is, it's located in the town of Menagio. I love wandering around that yes. little town. I love eating gelato there. It has one of my favorite places for gelato. That is the place that I ate gelato three times. I think you, know, you texted us and you were like, I'm so tired, but I need to stay awake for three more hours. And we were like, time for gelato. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and it, their spa is out of this world. It's yes. huge. It's humongous. It's gorgeous. It's very blue. They've got all this blue lighting. My sister and I both did massages there. She's not a huge massager person, but she did one for 30 minutes for $100. And I, of course, did the 50 minutes for $160. So you know, it was great. And and one of my favorite things to do is just wander around Menagio. We did the second day take the ferry over. You can take it to two to different cities in Lake Como. Last time we went to Bellagio. This time we went to the uh, town of Verena. You can do both of them in a day. I'm kind of like Jess. I'm like, uh, I'm just going to do one thing and not going to fill up my day too much. The ferry is super cheap. I think it's, you know, probably under $10, you know, to get there and back. And I had the best meal of my whole trip, thanks to Jess. We went to a place that she suggested in Verena called Osterio Quattro Pass. It was this pumpkin ravi. Was it pumpkin or, or butterscotch ravi? Or butterscotch? A butterscotch. Butter, yeah, butternut squash. Butternut squash. I think it was butternut squash. And it had oh, like yeah. zucchini, like crispy yeah. zucchini or eggplant. It's something on top. Like I don't remember. It but was zucchini. It was crispy zucchini and a cream sauce. And it was out of this world. And Verena actually ended up being my, most people like Bellagio the best. I really loved Verena oh, even I more. like Verena way more. Me Bellagio too, I, feels too like Americanized to me. Verena much feels busier. more more Italian. Yes. Like classic I, I Italian. agree. So the um when we were there last time, the Grand Victoria concept did not have their beach club. Well, now they have that. You you know, I thought it would be right below where the hotel is. So you have to walk down a little bit to it, but there is tons, tons of seating, tons of loungers tons of um, umbrellas. You, there's an outdoor restaurant there. There is an uh, indoor restaurant. There's an infinity pool. There's an area that's kind of marked off for swimming in the lake. Way too cold. We Our weather wasn't perfect on any of this trip. It was a little bit cooler. We did go down and lay on the loungers for a little while, but there was no way I was getting in any water. But it was it's just really cute. It's really nice to go down to the beach club. Now, this hotel, which we love, sadly, isn't bookable with Hyatt now, but you can still book it with Hilton because Hilton has a partnership now with the small luxury hotels. It can be booked for 120K Hilton points. It would be a good use of a free night certificate. I will probably try to go that route in the future. When we were leaving, my sister says, oh, we'll probably never come back again. I go, never say never. I love this well, hotel. She may not be going back again. Oh, because that's right. I, there's, there's no way I'm going to be going back. 
I was about to say she's giving Pam a challenge because Pam will be like, if you doubt me, I'll make it happen. But she's going to be making it happen for Alex instead of Julie. I yeah. Assume. Yeah. I'll lose a daughter if I go back with Julie again. But this is probably my favorite hotel. I mean, it is so bougie to me. Everybody there that even stays there looks bougie. They, I mean, there's a lot of Italians that stay there. They're in there. They've got their Italian designer bags. They've got their Italian clothes. I mean, I'm walking around in my Vioris. I'm not looking very <laughs> bougie, but it is bougie. It is the lifestyle of their rich and famous hotel that I feel like the life I was meant to live that I couldn't live if it wasn't for credit card points and miles. But it is so lovely and their buffet breakfast is amazing i just feel so peaceful when i go there mm -hmm. like they have outdoor seating and they have a they have someone that plays the piano outside and you just sit there and you look at the lake and there's like someone playing the piano i don't know i just feel so relaxed when i'm there and i i hope i can go back in the future i i'm planning yeah. to use Hilton free night certificates there because such a good value for those free night certificates. And it's just such a unique property. And I am obsessed with it. It really is unique and it really is so restful. My sister and I said, you know, you hardly see that many people. You see some people, but it's just not noisy. It's yeah. so quiet. It's so restful. You don't hear anybody when you're in your room. They've done a really good job with it. And it smells really good. I love the smell of their, their um, signature wash. scent. Their, <laughs> yes, I love their signature scent. It's my favorite. I bring back the lotion and the wash, and I try to make it last as long as I can because I love it. So yeah. we did then when we were through with um, Lake Como. We took a ride back to Milan. Spoiler alert, our limo driver came. He took us to the train station. It took us about an, an hour and a half to get there when we were going, but it was about an hour. It was really fast going back. And then we took the train to Cinque Terre. Now, that is a slow three-hour ride because I swear they're stopping at every single town on the way. It is real. It's not very fast. Cinque Terre is a place that my sister and I were supposed to go to the last time we went to Italy. And she, we were in Florence and she got word that her mother-in-law was passing. And so we had to cut that part. So this was what we really were going back to Italy was to make this part happen. I happen to love Cinque Terre. Reminds me a lot of um, the Amalfi Coast. It's a series of five gorgeous fishing towns and it's just breathtaking. Um, there are no cho chain hotels there, so you're not going to be able to use points and miles in the traditional way. You can offset a place that you stay there at with Capital One Venture Miles Purchase Eraser, so that's always a possibility. I just didn't do that. I prefer to save those miles for business class seats. Our, the first time that we went, we stayed at a place called Villa Steno. It was more on a hill, more of a climb. This time I decided to want to stay somewhere different. So I had found this place called the Hotel Pasquale. It is in the perfect location. I mean, you get off the train, you can walk with your luggage there. You barely turn the corner around heading into Monterosso and it's right there. It was about a little less than $400 a night with breakfast when you split it with someone it's doable. It is, like I said, in the town of Monterosso. Now, Cinque Terre is hacked during the day. I mean, Jess, I'm not sure you want to go there now that you've talked about not liking crowds. Because during the day, yeah, it's but insane. She's in San Santorini, so you could do it. Yeah, it's insane. And it's the same reason Santorini is so busy during the day, is that everybody comes off the cruises. So the cruise uh -huh. ships, um, they dock out of La Spezia and... They all, everybody comes into the five towns during the day. So it is insane during the day. And then, you know, in the evening, everybody goes back to their cruise ships and it becomes this little sleepy village that I adore. I feel like I'm living in this, I'm a, you know, a citizen of the sleepy, of the sleepy village. And I love the feel of that. That's my favorite 
thing as the evenings in Cinque Terre. To get to the different towns of Cinque Terre, usually what I've done, what I did in the past was we took a ferry. And it is incredible as you're taking this ferry and you're coming upon each city because they're sitting on these hills. They're colorful houses. I mean, it's, they're so stunning. You've got boats sitting out there. You've got the fishing boats. One of the things I love, and this is just me with Italy, I love seeing everybody's sheets and their laundry hanging out their windows. And it's just so picturesque to me. And so that's my favorite way to get around um, Cinque Terre. But the night that we got in, it had been kind of rainy. And the next day, the seas were pretty rough. And that they didn't even run the ferries. And so we were able to, so we took the trains that you can get a train for a, under $20 a person. Uh, it's a Cinque, Cinque Terra card. And we got it through our hotel and it let us then go to each city and we could go back and forth for all day long, as many times as we wanted to. The five, vidi, five cities are Monterosso, Vernassa. Corniglia, Manarola, and Rio Maggiore. Now, Corniglia is one that you don't even get to go to if you're going by ferry, but you can by train. But then it has 352 steps to get up to the main part of the city. So guess which one we skipped. Yeah, we I'm didn't go to guess. that one, but we <laughs> did go to the other ones. I hadn't gone to that one before because I'd gone by ferry. But I love going into those little towns and walking around. Like I said, pretty busy with the cruisers. We found some really good food. Um, it was just just fun. I just just love it. Uh, so that's what we did the first day was just explore the cities. You can also, and you will see hi so many hikers there. It is a hiker's paradise. You can hike between the different cities. A lot of people do that. I wouldn't even... Well, to be honest, I'm not going to consider it anyway, but I really wasn't going to consider it because there was, there it rained the day before and I see these people with their walking sticks. I'm going, you're going to walk on that, you know, muddy road, you know, trails? I was like, no. So that is, it isn't something I'm probably going to do anyway, but if you're a hiker and I know, and I that. used to be more of a hiker. I'm not going to probably do. There's a thousand percent chance you're not going to do that. Yeah. Well, it's funny because she's like, it's crowded and it's a hiker's paradise. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> ten, years, 10 years ago, I probably would have done the hike. I would have liked doing it. Yeah. But these knees aren't what they used to be. And I'm not doing that hike. So that's kind of what we did the, um, the first day, full day that we were there. And then the second day, we weren't sure what we wanted to do. They do have a great, great beaches in the area. And we woke up and it looked sunny. And they were starting to get the umbrellas up. And we thought, we thought, well, let's just wait and we'll go do that in the afternoon. And we decided we had talked to our, um, one of the ladies at the hotel. And she said, I said, was it, what's it like to go to Levanto? I knew that that was nearby. And, and the other thing is Portofino is about an hour and a half away. I've been watching this show called Hotel Portofino, which is like Downton Abbey. If anybody wants something that's kind of like that to watch, I really like this show. And I got my sister on watching the show. We totally thought about going to Portofino, but we were leaving the day after that. We thought, okay, we can't take that long of a train ride. So we just, we opted for the easier train ride to Levanto and went to their really big beach area, gorgeous church there. They had a flea market that day. It was really, really relaxing. So if you don't want to stay in Cinque Terre, but you'd like to visit there, you can always stay in Levanto, much quieter, much sleepier. And then you could go into all these other cities. So that's my tip for those that don't want to, you know, be, and it was really quiet there. I mean, there was really just locals that were around there. Uh, so we were there in Cinque Terre for three nights, and then we took the train back to Milan. That um, took us three hours, and from there we took we, had, we decided that we were going to go to the Malpensa Airport for our last night 
because we were flying out, not as early as, not terribly early, but we were flying out at 10 in the morning. Now, the thought did cross my mind. I'm going back to Milan. Can I stay at the Park Hyatt Milan? <laughs> Is that a possibility? And then we could stay the one night there, and then we could just have an Uber into the airport. And I was willing to do that. I was willing to get up earlier and do that. But there was no availability with points at the Park Hyatt Milan. I checked even up until the night before to see if we could. Yeah. So that's something I'm going to have to go back and do. So instead, we stayed at the Sheraton Malpensa. And this was my second time staying there, too. And honestly, this is a really nice airport hotel. I mean, there's, there's a handful of really nice airport hotels, I feel like. But this is one that's, that's great. It has really huge rooms. It was platinum, so we got free breakfast. They had this thing. Sheraton's had this um, once a week or sporadically. They had this thing called The Gathering where they had a lot of um, beverages and hors d'oeuvres that they served. And it was, it was pretty nice. It was 48. Yeah, that's really nice for an airport hotel. Yeah. I mean, it's big. It's, they, they, have, they have conventions there, lots of mm -hmm. stuff. So they catered a lot of things. The lobby was really nice. Our room was huge. Re you know, my sister was really impressed. It's 48K a night and it's a nice hotel. But then, you know, then I go, yeah, but I stayed at the Grand Victoria for 45K a night. <laughs> and, you know, and that's just kind of the value where you go, Hyatt has such outsized value. I mean, yeah. this was a nice Sheraton Hotel at the airport, but I paid more for it than I stay at would stay at any Park Hyatt, and it wasn't a Park Hyatt. It was a nice yeah. Sheraton, but it wasn't a Park Hyatt. So, but it was it was great to sleep in, and we didn't even have the the breakfast that was there because we decided that we'd just head to the airport and go to a lounge. We flew then from Milan to Istanbul to JFK, we were getting into JFK super late, like almost midnight. So this is where I'm like, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to even be able to find anything, you know, probably to get all the way home. And even if it was, I'd probably prefer to stay at the airport hotel anyway and just go to sleep. It was such a long flight home. So we stayed at the Hyatt Regency at JFK for 18K. Um, and it just helps my jet lag so much. I find it a, they've, it's got big rooms. It's nice. It's a decent um, breakfast in the morning in the lounge. And so it, it works out really well. And I think you've stayed there, Jess, too. I have. It was, yeah. I think it's, I think as far as airport hotels go, it's pretty nice. Yeah, I think so too. So all in all, we went on to four cities. We had multiple train rides. We were on a couple of ferries, a limousine transfer that wasn't a limousine. Yes, Alex. <laughs> Ubers and taxis. And you know what? Two senior citizens figured this all out. Well, really one senior citizen. My sister can just kind of comes along, you know, but I am mean, And the only mistake that was made on this trip wasn't by us. And we had such a fun time just, you know, laughing and joking and spending time with each other and this was you know it wasn't country hopping but we were city hopping and we were definitely going to a lot of different things and trains can be a little confusing but all I can say is if this 71 year old grandma can figure all of this out I'm sure that any of you can figure it out too. Well, it sounds like you and Julie had a great trip. And I know you're already thinking of where to go in 2025 for your sister's trip. Where are you thinking of for 2025? Well, we've been talking about going to Sweden, Norway, and Finland, or at least two of them. And that was never something that I thought of. But when my husband and I were in Nairobi, we talked to this lady that was in, lived in Sweden. She says, oh, you've got to go to Stockholm. It's gorgeous. And so when my sister mentioned she'd like to do it, I thought, okay, I think that's what we're going to do. Someplace I haven't ever considered before I had credit card points and miles. Well, that sounds amazing. And I'm also laughing, though, that you're going, well, I know Julie wants to go there, but you're like, this lady in the lounge told me it was beautiful, so we're going to go there. <laughs> this lady in Nairobi 
told me it's beautiful. But I have actually, I actually was, I saw someone's pictures from Norway the other day and it looked amazing. So I definitely support Norway being the second country you go to because it looks amazing. Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoy this episode. If so, we would love it if you left a review and shared it with your family and friends. Thanks so much for listening to Points Talk with the Travel Mom Squad. Make sure to hit the subscribe or follow button from wherever you're listening so you never miss an episode. Want to start jet setting even faster? Follow the links in the show notes to learn about everything we discussed in today's episode. And to stay connected and follow along, follow us on Instagram at Travel Mom Squad. We can't wait to see where in the world points and miles take you.